change your mind, change your money, change your life. I am Coach Rob Lee Simmons, the host of this podcast, and let me be your tour guide to greatness. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If I was doing any better, I would be you. Welcome to the Greatness Academy podcast. I am here with my man, Rafael Hughley. He is a senior network engineer, but the reason I have him on here is because more so he is a business developer and an investor. Welcome to the show, my man. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Man, I love it. I love it. I love it because every time you and I have a conversation, an authentic conversation, it's like a podcast and we should have recorded it. (laughs) <laughs> and we didn't capture everything that we need to capture. So we're going to do this thing today, man. All right. Yeah. So, so tell me, like, tell me, like, kind of when did you start realizing that your regular job wasn't it and it was time to start looking at different ways to make money? Uh, so uh, essentially it was, uh, you know, we're both in the military. Uh, you know, I did 20 years in the Air Force. And I'd like to say it was probably that last five years in the Air Force when mm-hmm. I was uh, thinking to myself, like, hey, listen, um, you know, uh, I, I've, I've given the Air Force all these years. I'll get this, this and this. But at the end of the day, I can't leave the Air Force to anybody. Right. I can't right. I can't take the Air Force and, you know, pass it on to my, my, my descendants. I can't I can't do anything like that. Right. Like it doesn't belong to me. It won't belong to anybody but the United States government, so on and so forth. So I, I came to that realization. And I started to wonder, like, what what could I do? What could I do to be better? What could I do to make better? What could I, what could I do to be more? What could I do to make more? Right. And that's that's kind of how I got into the whole entrepreneur thing, the investment thing, and all that kind of stuff. That's that was the genesis of it. Yeah, um, yeah. And and I and I and I I concur. I, I got to a position where, you know, it started a, a while back, but it got to a position where, hey, there is more to this, and. Mm-hmm especially when I start realizing that I, I'm I'm trading my time for money and I'm thinking, okay, so if everybody is working hard and I know I'm a hard worker, how come I'm mm-hmm. not getting where I need to be? And that's when I realized it's not really time for money. It's money for money and other people's right. time for money. Right. right. Exactly. Um, what, what was the first uh, venture that you started to get into or recognize, Hey, this is making me money and I don't have to do much of anything. Uh, cryptocurrency. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote that initial cryptocurrency boom. Um, you know, I I, uh, I invested like uh, it was something like eight thousand dollars or something like that. And uh, at its peak, I was sitting at like, and this is without me adding anything, I had made like one hundred and fifty thousand nice. dollars. Something, something <laughs> wild like that. Yeah. So that's what, that's what really woke me up. I, it sparked my head. Like you, you know what? You know, this money can make itself. I don't right. have to do it, right? I can't, it can go make itself. Right. And so ever since then, man, I, I've been invested in stocks, cryptocurrencies, small businesses. I just, I love it, right? So, uh, and that's that's what uh, that's what really woke me up to investing. You know, it's uh, it's one of those things where uh, you you get a kind of a taste. I mean, I learned I learned a hard lesson about greed too because I didn't. Oh I didn't yeah. Set any goals. So like uh, when it crashed, I went with it, right? So, right. But like, uh, but I learned a hard lesson then, but. Uh, it got it, it put the bug in me about uh, about investing and uh, and, ha- and making your money work for you. And I started actually uh, leaning forward to see what was out there that I could uh, I could exploit to, to you know gain more money. Yeah, crypto was one of those things for me because when I initially got into crypto, I I it, it was kind of a, a a twofold thing, right? So I start looking at crypto and I'm like, hey, let me put some money into this thing. I put the money into the crypto, and of course, I start making money. Of course, the market goes up, but of course, the market comes back down. So I said, hey, people are actually making money off of this. How do I figure it out like they did? So I start doing a little bit of um, studying, start learning about fundamental analysis, technical analysis. And then when I got into that, and I, I was like, oh, if this is how you trade in the market and how you trade in the crypto, oh, I can get a bag. And I, and I just... I started running from there. And when I figured exactly. out, when I figured out, this is the biggest thing for me. When I figured out that it wasn't hard, it was a wrap. <laughs> it was a wrap. And that's and that's one of the things, man. Just because you don't know it doesn't make it hard. You just have to 
you know, be repetitious about it. Go in, learn something, learn something new, build on top of that. I, I believe it took me like two weeks to learn technical analysis. And oh, wow. I was locked in. I was locked that's in, the, start day trading. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, and it's, cra it's crazy because like th through that uh, COVID wave, we were day mm -hmm. trading and uh, because we were, I was teleworking, but as soon as they called me back into work, I was like, oh, y'all taking the <laughs> Y'all owe me some money, man. <laughs> Y'all owe me a bag. And so it, even at that point, that was really, and that was recent, uh, 2000, probably early 2001, that trigger for me is when I really started trading my time for money, you know, having to go into office and losing opportunities through the time that I was trading was the trigger for me. Um, what is, well, let me throw that out there. Uh, what do you think about Bitcoin? Oof, it's a, it's kind of a love hate relationship, right? Um, because you know it's a, it's, it's it's that's a hard one because I I love it and I love what it stood for at the time, but it also brought to light a lot of the uh, a lot of the human nature out there, right? Like mm. you get a, a lot of those scammers. I had like I had two bitcoins stolen from me, right? So like mm. it's just you know like when when something like that happens, you're like there's no way for me to get my money back. It is literally like having somebody take your wallet and run off with it, and they got whatever money was in there, whatever cars were in there, they got them all right. And it's, right, it's exactly the same thing. So the lack of security really, really put a bad taste in my mouth. I got I've gotten got twice. Uh, mm -hmm. The first time somebody hacked into my wallet and stole about nine grand. This uh, that was the second time. The first time somebody swindled me out of two Bitcoin. Uh, it was a, a Ponzi scheme and I, I should have known better, right? Too good to be true kind of thing. Right. But we all, we all got to learn that lesson either the hard way or the easy way. I, I learned the hard way. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, ooh, that's that's a good segue into my next question, right? So I think it's, it's really big to understand like uh, learning hard lessons and, you know, having that experience, but, uh, but more so having a mentor to teach you uh, to avoid those so you don't have to go through the experience and the the, right. the proof is in the pudding already and just kind of right. following your mentor because they've already uh, walked the path. You know, you got the little shoes and you're just feeling the big steps that they walked in. Um, mm -hmm. How have your mentors affected the way that you've been investing and look at how to make money? And then uh, would you like to name a few of your mentors or give them some shout out? So well, in the crypto space, I didn't really have any. Uh, well, I mean, I had friends, we all invested together. So we were all kind of at the same stage and crypto was so new. So we didn't really right. know. We didn't understand what was going on. Um, as for, uh, as for mentors, you know, um, in, in the, in today's day and age, you know, uh, uh, Merrick Green, he's, uh, you know, he was a Lieutenant, re retired Lieutenant Colonel United States Air Force. He has, uh, he has his, his, his business of shot, his business, MG4 Tech, um, uh, uh, Curtis Shull, he really helped me out. He helped me understand business and uh, what it means to actually, uh, you know, run a business. Uh, Proxy Group is his, uh, that's his organization, proxygroup.com, check them out. Um, so like, yeah, those are those are two of my big mentors that really helped mold my, my thought processes around business and how I, how I run things in, in, uh, in the businesses I participate in. No, oh, that's good money, man. So let me ask you, I, I like giving my people free game, man. I, I, I want to know some of your your tactics. Tell tell me some of the, <laughs> the secrets of business. Let's say I'm a, a new guy or I'm looking to start building my business. Mm -hmm. Say I'm a business owner and I've been in business for a minute. What are mm -hmm. some of the, uh, and I want you to give us some mentorship. What are some of the hard pit, hard falls that you've had um, in business? And what are some things that you would key in or tell somebody, hey, start focusing on this um, and everything else will follow itself? Um, so, I got I got two bits of advice. Uh, the first one is to to choose your business partners wisely, you know, um, because you guys have to be on the same page, or gals, right? You got to be on the same page. You can't you you, you can't be uh, running in two different directions, and you and and everything has to be crystal clear. and It needs to be on paper. Make sure all your contracts are uh, are, are rock solid. Something happens if your business partner gets hit by a bus tomorrow. What happens to the business? All that stuff needs to be meticulously thought out, and that you need to know what what you're gonna be going through, and uh, you know, and make sure your business partners are, you know, they they. How can I say this? Make sure that they don't have any kind of uh, turmoil turmoil in their lives going into a business because uh, it can 
it can really strain the business relationship if you're if 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 both of you guys aren't uh good at home. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. I would so. uh, on top of that, I definitely would recommend like if you're going into business with someone, uh the successful pieces of business and, and mentors that I've learned from is the ones who are in a reasonable relationship. You can't say that everybody's relationship is happy or not happy, right. but I definitely, before I would go in business with them, well, one thing I would do for sure is let's go on a double date. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a double date. Let's go hang out. Let's have fun. Let's see how you interact with your people. Yeah. Uh, let's see how we interact with each other. Like we have our relationship, but what was it? What does it look like when we have other people around? Our people around? How do you treat your people? You know, do you open the doors? Because if you open the doors for your woman, and that means that's the same thing that you do for your business, and that you'll mm -hmm. do for your friends and your business partners, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. just looking at somebody's character is really important. Uh, because mm -hmm. that the way that they treat people in regular life is the way that they run their business. And um, exactly. I think that's just, that's exactly. fundamental and instrumental to, to get into the bag, man. Yeah, exactly that. Right. Uh, the second thing I would say is uh, if you are looking to invest in a business, uh, uh, start in a small business and uh, you know, and understand what your role is in that. And as an investor, uh, you know, you don't want to just hand money out and then go to work and then there's no clearly defined lines in what you're doing and what they're doing because uh, you're investing in somebody else's business, somebody else's, um, you know, uh, dream. So you have to understand that that is their dream, right? As an investor, you, you can expect to return. You're gambling on their dream. If you think their dream will work, that's great, but it's still their dream. So if you don't want to deal with that, then don't, don't invest in a small business. Go start your own. Ooh, um, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think uh, that actually goes into, you know, the the other part of investing, which is fundamental analysis, really mm -hmm. understanding the business, really understanding the numbers that they're doing, really mm -hmm. understand what the dream looks like in comparison to the possibility. Yeah. Uh, that is, man, that is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, and I would even go as far as to say, like, even when you're investing in these large corporations that are, you know, publicly traded and all these other things that I would take that same mentality, like who is running that business and what was their dream? And are they there? Right. Yeah. Because if not, then what are you actually investing in? Are you investing in, uh, are you investing in the, the, the initial dream or are you investing in what you, what, cause I mean, uh, a company without a dream doesn't, is, uh, is a company without a direction. So they're just going to follow the money and eventually that leads off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And so that's 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 instrumental because uh, i mean i, I don't want to give an example because i don't want to be bashing because this is the greatness academy we're not about bashing we're about building up right straight right. the land of greatness right but right, look right. at at the process uh, the, the the possibilities of looking at a business knowing what their dream is and then actually seeing that they're beyond what they dreamed right mm -hmm. so now what is the dream like, right. is that worth investing in as they're not even going there? They're just trying to maintain something that they've already checked block on, right? That right. might that might be a business that could get sold off later. You never mm -hmm. know, because once they check block, it's hard. So you got to know and understand what that dream is. That's a great point, man. Yeah. I mean, look at companies like Blockbuster, right? Like they could they achieve the dream. What was next? Right. I mean, you know, they, they didn't have a next. So you, you got you got you really have to look at that and see where where, where these companies are headed and uh, what the dream is. You know, that's why Tesla is so valuable, because the man has a dream. Say what you want about him, Elon Musk, but he has a dream. Yeah. You know, like, you know, it, and it's, that's why his company is so valuable. It's not going anywhere anytime soon because he's got so many dreams. They're all they're all on up and up. You yeah. know, Virgin, Virgin, the man has a dream. Uh, You know, Amazon has a dream. Meta, it was not a great dream, but he had a dream. Right. And still dreaming. Uh, yeah. So, you know, those 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 types of companies, even Home Depot, something that's grounded as Home Depot, they still have a dream. So, you know, you look at those those types of companies and you see, you know, where they're going and what they want to do. And you can say, yeah, I like that. I can invest in that because they're going in the direction they have somewhere they want to go. Yeah, that's and, and you mentioned back uh, at the beginning of your statement, um, Blockbuster and their dream and the, the fact that they had the opportunity to invest in Netflix then was like. That's not what we do here. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, no. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes you believe in your dreams too hard. Don't pass on the good opportunity. Learn they how to. The dream. They achieve the dream. It didn't go any further than the dream. You know, exactly. you, you get there. You know what? You got to have the next step. They didn't have it. Exactly. Evolution, man. 
Yeah, they're charging people late fees. You don't know right. nobody wants to pay that. <laughs> right. And then and then when Netflix first came out, it's like, I can keep this DVD for how long? <laughs> <laughs> I get it back to y'all. Yeah, I know, eventually. Yeah. So what is your favorite type of business to invest in? Uh so for me, I'm I'm agnostic to be honest. Um okay. so uh I, I I really prefer investing in people. Um mm. so so like uh like for example, you know, you can have a retail store over here with a with an artist that's brilliant, right? But they they uh and they 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 have they have the the talent, they have the the drive, but they don't have the business acumen, they don't have the chops. I would invest in that before mm. I invest in, in this guy with this business that's taking off and is going places, but this guy's, you know, he's, he's not, uh, he's not the best dude. So you can tell like his employees are going to resent him eventually, that kind of thing. So I'll, 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 I'll I'll deal with the hard worker who treats his people nice. And it just, it hasn't gone anywhere yet because he, they don't know how to do it versus the guy who knows how to do it, but he's also kind of an asshole. Right. Absolutely, man. I, I wholeheartedly believe that, that the people are the heart and soul of the company. Mm -hmm. um let's let's change waves a little bit so um really looking at the aspect of not necessarily i don't want to go into business investing i want to talk a little bit about um business developing right so what is the what do you think is a foundational piece of a business so uh the foundational piece of a business is uh one is a, a decent business plan right so, you know, I was talking about the guy over here who has, you know, he has this, uh, this he has a clothing store, he, he's a designer, he has the talent, but he doesn't have a business plan. That's where I come in, right? Okay, let's, let me help you figure out how to turn your talent into money, right? Uh, uh, one of the businesses I, invest, I invested in, uh, Soul for Soul, right? Mm -hmm. We, uh, we, we did, uh, so he had when I when I met the guy, he was he was basically selling his, his shoes out of the back of his car. Like he was doing, you know, customized shoes. He was selling them. He was doing a great job. He was making he was he was making money. Uh, but he moved to, when he moved to Germany, he had to move the business from UAE to Germany. And he was starting from ground zero again. So he started selling out of the back of his truck. So I was like, okay, well, let's put a business plan together. Let's start looking at, you know, all right, uh, you got these shoes. How much did the shoes cost? Okay. You, you we paint shoes. How much does the paint cost? Okay. How long does it take? So like you got to do a design. So we need to figure out how much time we're going to charge the customer to to uh, sit down with a designer and, you know, so they can, because that's that time is money. So they sit down, do the design. Um, and then we got to figure out, okay, I, I had to put an equation together. I actually had to do, uh, I had to put my, my math brain, my math cap on and, and put an equation together. Okay. So how much are we going to charge these customers of, uh, and it varies depending on the complexity of the shoe, the coverage of the paint on the shoe, uh, the 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 amount of uh, uh, time and effort it takes to do upholstery if they want that. So we had to we had to actually uh, create an equation, which we patented by the way, nice. to uh, to to uh, to you know get this shoe and and get everything uh, and and figure out how to charge for the the time of an artist. And that's not easy because uh, artists uh, you typically when an artist isn't like a, a doesn't have a business mind. They charge based on how they feel um, versus what it, what the, the actual value. And right. a lot of times they'll, they'll undercut themselves and they won't make any money. Right. They'll charge the worth instead of the value. Like, hey, right. I only paid $10 for this, like $5 worth of the paint. But mm -hmm. you put 20 years of experience into this. That's completely mm -hmm. different. That's exactly. valuable. Exactly. You know? Yep. So time, uh, time, paint. Shoe coverage because you, you got to paint the shoe, so you got to know how much paint you put on that shoe. So you you got the shoe, you know what size the shoe is. So based on the size of the shoe, you know how much coverage you got to put on the shoe for that specific design, right? Like it's there's a whole equation I put together for that, and uh, we use it to 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 kind of value our our uh, our, our product today. And if, excuse my ADHD because you know I'm about to switch my mind is about to go in a a whole different direction again, but I love just just picking your brain and, and giving people the opportunity to see the possibilities of what you can do. So you did 20 years um, in the military and, mm -hmm. and you got out and you started doing a few things, start doing some business ventures, um, started developing a few businesses. Um, mm -hmm. Also you have investments in properties and things of that nature. Um, how important do you believe 
It is to a have a plan, have a plan after the military, and then diversify your portfolio. That's uh, very important. I mean, honestly, uh, what, like you, if the best way I can say this is, especially for anybody who's eighteen years old, sixteen years old, you need to start planning your life. Right? Uh, the military was part of the plan. So, like, uh, you know, it, 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 I didn't just start the plan, you know, oh, OK, I'm about to retire in five years. No, the plan started when I was 16. And my dad was like, hey, you can't stay here past 18. We can't have two men, grown men in this house. So you got to go. Right. 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 So, so there was two options, college or the military. My grades weren't great. So <laughs> there was only one option, really. Right. So, you know, I got in the Air Force. And then, um, you know, uh, and even then, I'm, you know, going through the Air Force, you know, you go you go through tough times in the Air Force, almost derails your plan. Right. But even when I got out, I realized, you know, hey, I retire at the age of 38. I have my military retirement. You know, the the, the VA takes care of me, too. So, you know, like uh, so I I'm, I'm, I have, you know, that safety net that's always going to be there. Right? right. So no matter what, if everything falls apart today. I have properties in Croatia out there in Eastern Europe. I can leave everything behind and go live off my military retirement and my VA benefits and just go live my life and not have to worry about a single thing ever again. Right. So you have to plan your life to to, to in that meticulous of a way, because if you don't, um, you'll be kind of dependent on, you know, your business ventures working out and you don't want to be put in that position because it, it kind of limits your options and it it actually limits your uh, your uh, ability, your your ability to imagine. Because you're constrained by, you know, you're constrained by what resources that you have, right? You, when you have resources that are unlimited, they're going to pay you for the rest of your life. Then you have you have the ability to imagine you can take more risks, and if those risks don't pan out, you know, yeah. you just go on to the next. Yeah, I think that's that's really part of the importance of an emergency fund too. And I think if you can, the younger you can get started with your emergency fund, mm -hmm. the sooner you can get started with your emergency fund. The more you build it up, the more you can start to gamble, risk, uh, really invest, and then mm -hmm. feel comfortable in being creative in what you're doing. Because now right. what you're doing is you, you're able to exercise more risk and more creativity when you do those mm -hmm. things. I think that's ideal. So what does your uh, di diverse portfolio look like? All right. So um, I'm, I'm, uh, I got the, uh, so I have two businesses that I'm a part of. We have international real estate. My wife has two businesses. Um, I have, you know, military retirement and VA benefits. I have a, a, a job that I work from home. So I work remotely. It really, really expands your flexibility if you get the right job. So yes, I'm working, but I have flexibility to work from home and in between projects. I'm already at home. I'm, I'm next to the things that I invest in. I'm next to my investments. I'm next to this. I'm next to that. So I can, you know, take time to to go out and do those, those things uh between my projects that I have that I uh, for the company I work for right yeah uh, so so yeah. having having that, having that having the right job the right job that will lend the flexibility you need to to continue to 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 invest in yourself is great uh I I, I do I really enjoy that opportunity uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give them a shout out because you know they're not part <laughs> of the organization but yeah. you know but, uh but you know if, if you really want to know just gonna look on my LinkedIn right yeah. But like, uh, so that kind of those kind finding the right job for you. If you're going to invest time, trade time for money, you need to find a, a job that's going to be flexible enough where you can continue to uh, 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 multitask. Is what I'm saying it was something that so you, you'll be able to multitask and get, and get everything you need uh, while, you know, fulfilling the needs of that organization. So uh, that's 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 really important as well. Yeah. So I, I believe it's important. Um definitely to di diversify your portfolio based on, you know, just understanding it, the, some uh, exactly some of the things that you're talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, the other thing is I wanted to put in a plug about all of the things that you have with the trust now with the trust and you have all of those uh, diverse portfolio, yes, uh, yes, all, yes. everything in your portfolio and you're able to build in the trust, you know, I got to put in my plugs. Um, there you go. That's going but, uh, to yeah, yeah. I'll separate tell you. you, brother. Yeah, if your if 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 your audience doesn't know how important having a trust is, I'll tell them right now. I'll let them know everything that we need to do. So yeah. if you if you do not have a trust, then when something happens to you, your family's going to probate court. Probate court takes a percentage of your assets just for being there. That's it. So keep, so keep that in mind. And then on top of that, a trust is very flexible. A trust can be another. It's another entity outside of yourself. 
So it can it, it can hold your houses for you. It can hold your uh all your 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 insurance policies for you. It can it, you can outline how you want uh, money for inside the trust to be allocated to the the trustees, right? You can you it, it can hold your businesses, right? That's yeah. the, that's the most important thing, right? So like for example, if you decide to patent something, have the trust hold your patent. So you know if uh, if you have a business. And this is I'm 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 getting on some game. Here. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So if you have a trust, and you 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 have a trust, you have a a, a company, an S corp underneath that trust. That company is your holding company. The, the trust owns the holding company. The hold and then under that, that's the holding company is where you house all your LLCs. So if you have a bunch of LLCs, your brother starts an LLC. It's, it's owned by the holding company. Your daughter starts an LLC. It's, whole, it's owned by the holding company. And and uh, anything that they do in that LLC will probably require a patent if they have, like, you know, a logo or anything like that. Get your patent, get your trademarks, get all that stuff. But have that stuff be owned by the trust. Now, the trust, you can open a bank account with your trust. Your trust can have a social security number. So you can open a bank account with your trust. Those profits from those businesses uh, need to go to that bank account. And the way you do that is you, your trust owns the trademarks, owns all of the, uh, the copyrights and everything that those LLCs are using. The trust needs to invoice those LLCs for their profit every year. So all that profit goes back into that bank account of trust. That's how you build a family bank. Right. Uh, <laughs> so then you get, now you have uh, universal life insurance policies, universal life insurance policies have, uh, you know, they, have, they they get a cash value. That cash value can be borrowed against. There's no taxes on debt, right? So you borrow against those cash values to invest in new business ventures for filling the blank company for the next LLC that goes under that, that, that S Corp. That's how you build generational wealth. That's, That's it. how it's done. So, you know, uh, it's, and it's really circular. And, and when you die, you, the, tr the, the trust is the beneficiary of your life insurance policy. It goes into that bank account. Now you can you, you can loan you can lend against that money to, to another LLC for the next generation. The next generation just keeps going out. That's why the Waltons are so wealthy. That's why uh, Bill Gates is uh, uh, his offspring are going to be you know built for, set for life, right? Like all that's how all these billionaires and millionaires are continuing to perpetuate their wealth. It's they're using um, they're using life insurance policies to to to, to uh, leverage for for debt, and they use that debt to build businesses and the profits from those businesses to pay that debt off. Yeah. And I would tell you the easiest way to do this with a trust. If you got a trust, some kids and a house and a life insurance policy, next generation is gold because what yep. happens is you get a life insurance policy. The policy is worth the value of the home. And of course you may want a, uh, and if you guys want to talk about this, uh, definitely I have uh you know, a previous episode where uh, DJ Patterson, a financial professional, he can show you how to do this. Uh, myself, I can show you how to do this. And then if you don't like either of us, I know a handful of financial professionals that can show you how to do this, right? So what you want to do is you want to get that uh, insurance policy about the same value of the home, um, have that uh, policy beneficiary be the trust, have the uh, trust on the home as well, and then when mm -hmm. something happens to you and then that uh, that house needs to be transferred to your child, not only is there enough. Well, first of all, you have your insurance. It then cashes out, pays for the house. And then your will will state, hey, the new owner of the home is your child. And then your child does not have to pay any tap, uh, capital gains um, or taxes on that home. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they own it outright and it's paid off. Mm -hmm. Boom! Now you got our own home in a generation. Yeah, and they, and they, and that way you avoid the uh, uh, the death tax essentially. Absolutely. Um, because if you don't. You, if you die and the trust owns all your stuff, you don't own anything. Yeah, so they look at your estate. Passing. Yeah, you yeah. So you you all your stuff is passed to your trustees through the trust. It's not you know, that's the goal is not to own anything. Have the trust own it all. And yeah. if you can and if you can tie up everything in S corps and LLCs, you know, like for example, right. Uh, we have properties in Croatia. Uh, I'm going to open an LLC. That's a, a, a it's a, a travel agency. So mm. you know, now this travel, I, I will buy my uh, tickets from my travel agency, right? And now that's a tax write off for that vacation I just took Man. because I 
the, the travel agency is the one that booked the trip. They get they got all the money, and you know they they get the tax benefits from that. Yeah. So like you know, so it's it's it goes really deep, man. It it really does. You know, uh, if you if you have multiple cars and you're using Turo, open a, a car rental agency. You know, and then you use your car rental agency to and you leverage Turo as a, a primary mover for your cars and your car rental agency. Now your cars are now uh, uh, no longer liability; they're uh, they're generating revenue for you. So I mean, there's there's so many ways, there's so many different ways to to leverage uh, all of these these different uh, things that we have that nobody's thinking about. You got an extra room in your house that you want to rent? Start an LLC. Now you got a house. Now you got a, an apartment rental agency. Right. Like yeah. so so many ways you can do it. And like yeah. uh, people are just oblivious to it because they don't know. And it's, it's up to us to spread that knowledge. Right. Absolutely. If you don't know, come see me. He gave you the free game. I'm charging you. So either do <laughs> it or come to me. Give me the bag and I'll help you make a bag. There you go. <laughs> I, like I it. love it. I love it. And just so you guys know, he's helping me set up my trust. So yes. I, I, I am using his service and it's, it's top notch yes yes and then I, I i definitely appreciate your business i appreciate your friendship um we're getting closer to the end of this thing man so i want to go into you know the one thing i usually ask uh all of my guests coming on here what is the one time biggest purchase that you made and then how did it make you feel oh my house my house yeah. for sure like yeah. oh my god uh like my starter home is a half million dollar home, right? So yeah. like just 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 think about that, right? Like uh, I was I'm blessed enough to retire because I was you know jumping around from from base to base in the military and I was young, so I wasn't really thinking about investing my money in property like that. Uh, but you know I was able to accumulate enough assets and accumulate enough wealth where I could come and purchase my house, and uh, you know and then you know obviously you gotta have some credit to do it. But like uh, I was just uh, I was truly blessed to be able to to start my life with a, a house. That is, you know, uh, uh, this valuable, and I, I and I really, really, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciative of that, and I'm really thankful. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. I like your shirt, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, yeah, no, I like, every I like the colors you wear. Yeah, yeah I, I, I wasn't gonna say anything, but <laughs> since you brought it up, those, those colors you wear, and they're real nice. You know, yeah, maybe man. You, should, you, you probably should have considered those colors a couple of years ago. Yeah, but, you, you know. know we'll, we'll, Conversation for another time if, if anybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody can't be first, but I figured, man, you know what? Let me get on your level today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what that is, you know? But definitely, man. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you for coming on. Um, on the show, we always say winners win. And when you win, we win. And I want to thank you for being a winner, brother. I appreciate it, bro. And hey, I I'm happy to come back anytime. But if I get the uh, one million views, yeah, it sounds like we need to, you know, we need to go into business to get on open this YouTube channel. Yeah, absolutely. We'll double back. I appreciate it, man. We are out. Boom. <laughs> Thank you for joining the podcast. And remember, change your mind, change your money, change your life. We out.